Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Code with Ease by Varsha. So we are doing Core Java interview questions. So on multi-threading topic, here is the question that we are doing. What is a race condition? And uh, then we'll talk about the types of race condition. We're also going to see it via a code, how the race conditions happen. So first of all, race condition, what it means, firstly it occurs in a multi-threaded environment. What is a multi-threaded environment? Where there are multiple threads working together to achieve a common objective. In the previous videos of multi-threading, we have gone into the details of a difference between a process and a thread, how are, how do we create threads and all of that. So, so I would recommend to watch those previous videos also to gain a foundational knowledge about what threads are. So there is one common misconception between two terms in multi-threading. One is race condition and one is deadlock. So in the uh, next videos on the series, we're also going to talk in detail about deadlock. But today's video, we are focused going to be about race condition, the types, the code. And in the part two of this, we are going to talk about how can we prevent the race condition. Okay, so coming back to this. What actually happens is there are two or more threads who are trying to access a shared resource or a variable concurrently, meaning at the same time. And as a result of that, when we modify something which is shared value concurrently, we will see in the next slide how it happens. What happens is we are getting inconsistent or wrong results because of that. So why the race condition is a problem, race condition or data race, whatever you may call. Why it is a problem? Because it leads to incorrect, inaccurate, inconsistent results. And that is what we do not want, right? So the race condition occurs when the correctness of the program is compromised. And why is this compromised? Because there are multiple threads trying to manipulate. The keyword is the shared resource. There's one shared resource, let's say a variable, it can be a bank account balance or anything, but that shared resource is being manipulated by multiple threads at the same time. And that is what is leading to the data race. And what is the outcome of this? The outcome of, of this is you're getting wrong results, which you shouldn't be getting. And uh, so that is about the race condition. Now, what are the types? So basically there are two types of race condition that happens. Read, modify, write. So it is a three-step process. The first one is a three-step process. The second one is a two-step process. Now, when multiple threads are running in the system, there is one common thing which happens, which is the basic thing which we have to understand that the threads in what order they are going to run is completely dependent on the OS and the scheduling algorithm of the operating system. Okay. So the programmer who is writing the code has no control that T1 will execute or T2 will execute next or T3 will execute. Of course, if there are a finite amount of threads, we still can do the control. But imagine there are millions of hundreds of threads. You cannot guarantee the order of execution of a thread. Okay. Which thread will be uh, moving into the runnable state and when will that get a priority? All of that is not is not known to the developer who is writing to the writing the code. That is why it is the responsibility of the developer to make the code or write code which is thread safe. Why do we talk about this term of thread safe? So that we can prevent the data race like we said before. Why do we want to prevent the data race? Because we do not want incorrect result or data. So if I have to prevent the data race, I have to try to write thread safe code. So if I have to write thread safe code, I have to understand how the data race happens and then take a call accordingly. So the read, modify, write, this is a three-step process like I mentioned. So let's try to take an example and understand. Then we'll move to the ID to see the code for both of these. So in this, what happens is, let's say you have two threads, thread A and B. And both of them are trying to modify a common counter. Let's say the counter, the variable is currently five. So what will be the steps? What the thread, when the both the threads are started, what they are going to do first is, they will read the value as five. So thread A will read the value is five. Next step number two is to modify. So now what it will modify? The current logic is to do a shared, like whatever the counter is, count plus plus. So it is going to do five plus one, six. And third step will be to write. But thread A didn't get a step, didn't get a chance to write. Because after it did the modification, it got paused. The operating system gave a preference for thread B to run. So now what will happen in thread B? It is also going to read the value as five because Although thread A has modified the value from 5 plus 1, 6, it has not yet written the value back. So it will also read 5. Next, it is also going to now modify the same way it is going to modify 5 plus 1, 6. And in the same way, now B also got paused. Now the execution, like the control is now to thread A. So what did thread A do last? It modified the value 6. So now what it will do? It will write the value 6. 
After writing the value, let's say the control again goes back to B. Now, what did B do last? B had already modified the value 6. So, B will also tend to write the value 6. Now, you might say that, okay, A has also written the value 6. B has also written the value 6. So, ultimate value of my count variable is now 6. What is wrong in that? It is the correct value only. There is no compromise. But actually, this is not the correct value. When two threads were running, ideally the value of count should have been 7. A would have modified by 1 and B would have modified by another one. 5 plus 6, 6 plus 1, 7. But we are still getting 6. Why we are getting 6? Because the operations between thread A and B were interleaved. This is a term that we use. This operation was not an atomic operation. What is an atomic operation? If anything is an operation is atomic, there will be no thread or no interference in between. At one shot, the threads will be able to do read, modify and write. All, all the three steps together they should be able to do. But in this case, it was not the case. It was reading. Maybe in middle, there can be many combinations of this. Maybe it is reading, but not getting a chance to modify. Or maybe it is reading and modify, not getting a chance to read. read. At every step, there can be one kind of interference so that will lead to another different, you know, uh, that can lead to even more incorrect result. So there can be many different combinations that can happen. The point we're trying to make is because the threads are getting interleaved, that is why we are getting incorrect result. And why they are getting interleaved? Because this is not an atomic operation. So they will get interleaved in between. So this is one scenario which we will see. And second is the two-step process of check and act. So in this, what happens is there is certain condition which is checked. And based on the condition, some code is run. Uh, we call that a critical section of the code because anything where a shared resource is being modified, we call that as the critical section of the code. So, based on a condition, the critical section of the code is being run. What happens is, let's say I have again thread A and B. If thread A and thread B are doing the same check on the condition at the same time, they will see that the condition is true. But I, the idea is that originally this was not the case. The case was this condition. If it has to be true for one, one thread, it shouldn't really be true for another thread, let's say. So this condition, but what is happening is because A and B are running concurrently and A didn't get a chance to modify anything inside the critical section of code yet, maybe because it, it was a sleep method that was called on the thread, because it didn't get a chance. So what happens is B also saw that the condition was true. So if the condition is true for both the cases, what is going to happen? The critical section of the code will be modified by both the threads. And that is not right. So now let's move to the ID to see what is the impact that happens when these two types of race conditions happen in actual. ID, suppose we'll look into the read, modify, and write race condition. So here we have a class which is implementing the runnable interface. So when we try to create threads, we either have to implement the runnable interface or extend the thread class. Already covered the thread creation in one of the videos earlier. So, okay, so now inside the run method, what is this? Like when the thread actually executes, this is the logic which is going to execute when the th threads are actually getting a chance to run. Okay, so now we have the run method which is having a for loop running 100 times. Inside, like every in every iteration of the for loop, the shared counter is being implemented, like the example we just gave. And finally, this method is just going to return the final value of the shared count. Now, in the now, in the main class, I've created two threads, thread 1, thread T1 and T2. Now, I'm going to just start these two threads, T2.start. And I also will call the, also will call the join method because I want to catch hold of this value, the get count. Once both the thre threads are done executing is when I'm going to get the ultimate value of the shared. So, that is why I'll wait uh, for both the threads to complete. And then I'm just going to print out final value of the shared shared counter is equal to custom thread dot get count so this is going to give me the final value of the shared counter okay so now i can run this so what is the expectation that your thread two threads are there each of them will get a chance to run 100 times they're going to run so it should be 200 final result should be 200. So let's try to run this. 
final value of the shared counter is 200. So this is quite expected. Now your question may be, where is the race condition happening? This is what is expected, right? So 100 is too small a value. Let's try to increment it gradually to see. Now let's make it 1000. Expectation is we should get 2000 as the final shared variable count. That is also working. Now let's again try to increment it. Let's say there are now the value is 10,000. So I'm trying to make it more realistic and production grade kind of a scenario because it's not in production kind of scenario, your threads are not limited to just going to have only 100 iterations, 1,000. It can be millions of iterations. So let's say it's 10,000 now. So expectation it is that both the counters, I mean, both the threads will modify and give me 20,000. But that's not the case. We are getting 15,354, which is nowhere close to 20,000. I'll run it again. Now I'm getting 20,000. I'll run it again. Now I'm getting 16206. I'm getting different outputs in different in every run of this method of this call. I'm getting different outputs in every run of this program. Why is this happening? This is the race condition which we were talking of. The, the interleaving of the thread is happening. The read, modify, and write when, when there is such a big range of iteration that is happening 10,000 times the interleaving of threads is happening. Very much possible that one thread is interfering with another thread. So while the read is happening, maybe the modify has not happened and all sort of scenarios can happen. As a result of this, the baseline is I'm not getting my correct result. So this is the example where read, modify, write kind of a race condition is happening because two threads are manipulating on the same shared counter. Now, there are ways to prevent this. We will discuss about it in a different video. How can we prevent? Because there are many different ways of preventing. We can use locks. We can use atomic variables. We can use the most popular synchronized method, synchronized blocks. There are many different ways to use each of them. And it also depends on in what scenario you want to use each of them. So I don't want to go into that. We also want to talk about the second type of race condition now. Okay, so this is the second program that we are going to see that what is the scenario in this case? It is check and then write. It's not check and write, it's check and act uh, race condition. Anyway, so here I've taken the classic bank account example. There is a bank balance which wants to be manipulated by two different persons. It can be two different persons. It can be same persons, two different strategies. Like, for example, I went to an ATM. I want to withdraw money from my account. I also have a mutual fund SIP, which is trying to do auto debit from my account. I also have a scheduled bill payment, which is also trying to manipulate the balance of my account. So there are different entities or actors which are in the play and trying to modify the same shared resource. What is the shared resource? My bank balance. Here I've taken two threads, just named it as Ramesh and Payal, who want to manipulate the bank account balance. So why is this check and act race condition? Here we have certain condition. If the balance is equal to 100, so initially the balance is 100. If the balance is 100, only then you try to deduct 50 rupees from it. I can give it like maybe greater than equal to 100. So anything above 100, you try to manipulate and come bring it down to 50, like deduct 50 from it and don't go lower than that. Okay. So this is something like that. This is the condition. So my check is checking this balance. If the balance is greater than or equal to 100, only then you try to reduce the balance by 50 rupees. Otherwise, if it is not, means if it is lower than 100, okay, then you will say withdrawal is not done for this thread. So, what is the ideal condition? John, uh, so Ramesh went to the bank. He will see the balance is 100. 100 is greater than or equal to 100, condition satisfied, his balance should become 50. When Payal will be seeing the balance, she should be like, okay, the balance has already come down to 50. The balance is not greater than or equal to 100. She should not be able to do the withdrawal. This is the ideal condition should be like. Okay, so I'll just write one uh, sys out that withdrawal done, final balance equal to whatever the balance is. Now let's run this. Okay, so here what is happening first, Ramesh and Pyle went to withdraw the money at the same time and then it is showing they're withdrawing money. Now notice this condition was true in line number eight, which is why both the loggers or the sysouts are getting printed. Both are seeing the balance is greater than or equal to 100 and then both are trying to withdraw the money. 
what is happening is balance again this is also a multi step process first it has to do a read then it has to do a modify and then do a write so when ramesh did a modification he did a modification and it became 50 okay so finally it is saying withdrawal done final balance is 50 but when payal is doing the modification balance is already 50 she reduced it even further 50 minus 50 she made the entire bank balance zero this is not correct this is not the right way to happen you cannot have the ba final bank balance zero at least 50 is still okay there should be a minimum balance requirement is what i'm trying to say why did this happen this happened because when this check happened the condition when it ran in this both the threads are seeing the same balance and they're entering the critical section of the code what is the critical section this line right line number 10 my my uh, objective should be to make sure only one thread is able to manipulate the critical section of the code in this case because ramesh and payal are able to access the critical section of the code at the same time very obviously they will manipulate it in a wrong way and give me the incorrect result if i could do something like only ramesh or payal can see this condition as true at any given point in time means the balance is greater than or equal to 100 why will ramesh and payal see it at the same time this is happening because they're running concurrently when the balance greater than or equal to 100 ramesh is seeing at that time payal has also started the thread we don't know which thread is getting the scheduler uh, priority and getting to execute ramesh is seeing 50 he went inside the critical section of the code but he has not done manipulating the modification yet you see he is trying to waiting to withdraw the money ramesh then he is saying withdrawing money after that payal came into the picture so even before ramesh could modify the balance and then update the balance like i said read modify write three step even before he could do that payal was already inside the critical section because by the time ramesh has reached line number 10 Payal has already done the condition check and she is able to see 100 only. Why is Payal able to see 100? Because Ramesh has not modified the code as 100 minus 50. If he had, then she should have seen the balance is 50. Then this condition would have been false. Because he has, why, not, why Ramesh has not been able to modify the balance as of yet? Because it's a multi-step process. It might happen that the Ramesh's thread got uh, low priority or it went into sleep mode, it got paused and by that time Pyle's thread came into the runnable state and getting a priority to run. So because of that reason, both of them are accessing the critical section of the code and manipulating my shared resource incorrectly and I'm getting a wrong answer. A very common way to fix this problem is to use a synchronized block. Okay, so if I just have to show for this example, I can just do something like I'll write synchronized and then on this current object I'm writing synchronized block and I'll just put the I'll just put it over here. So what I'm trying to do is entire section is critical section. Okay, now if I run this, see what happens. Waiting to withdraw money Ramesh and then pile. So withdrawing money for Ramesh. See, there's only one sys out. Then Ramesh is getting the chance to execute entirely. He has done the final balance to 50. When Pyle said got the turn to execute this, what, what is happening over here is when Pyle said got the turn to run, what is happening? She is saying she is seeing that withdrawal not done. Her else block got executed because the balance is modified by Ramesh already. And finally, the withdrawal is done. Final balance is this. Ideally, after this, I should have a return statement because if it is not done, then I cannot say withdrawal is done. I'll just run it again. Right, so finally we got withdrawal is not done. So this is the expectation. Because we used a synchronized block. More on synchronized block method, all of that we will cover separately in the video. But today's video was more about what is a race condition, why it happens, what are the different types, how do we see it via code execution? How the race conditions happen? Okay. So, thank you so much for watching today's video. See you guys in the next one.